guys, this presentation is on solitary thyroid, thyroid nodule patient assessment and management. So a 50 year old healthy woman notices a lump on the sides of her neck. Ultrasound reveals a 1.5 cm solitary nodule in her thyroid. How would you assess her? So my provisional diagnosis for this lady is thyroid malignancy. However, taking into account the worst possible scenario with 80% of these thyroid malignancies being papillary, 15% follicular, 3% medullary and 2% anaplastic. My differentials for a solitary thyroid nodule, it could, can be a benign adenoma which can be functional or non-functional, secondary metastases to the thyroid, though rare, can include renal cell carcinoma, melanoma and breast. Um, infective causes such as acute suppurative thyroiditis caused by bacterial abscesses such as staphylococcus and streptococcus, inflammatory thyroid diseases such as Graves' disease and Hashimoto's, radiation-induced drugs such as lithium and amiodarone that can cause thyroiditis, and parathyroid tumour or lymphoma. So in terms of history, you want to assume that the patient is well and not in any respiratory distress, which is possible from a rapidly enlarging neck mass. Then we'll take a history focusing on the patient's symptoms, risk factors for thyroid cancer, and exclude differentials. In terms of symptoms, I want to ask about the lump, its size, the number, uh, the time period at which it grew, mobility, and over any overlying skin changes. I also want to ask for systemic features suggestive of neoplastic causes such as fever and weight loss. Ask for hypothyroidism um, symptoms such as cold intolerance, constipation, weight gain, fatigue, dry and itchy skin. Signs of hypothyroidism such as irritability, increased pers perspiration, heat intolerance, palpitations, tremor, anxiety, insomnia, fine brittle hair, frequent bowel motions and weight loss. And also ask about compressive symptoms such as dysphonia, dysphagia and dyspnea. I'd also like to ask about risk factors for thyroid malignancy. Um, for example, their age, less than 20 or greater than 60 years, a male gender, rapid growth of the lump itself, prior head and neck irradiation from Hodgkin's when they were younger, and a family history. You also want to exclude differentials, for example, a fever, myalgia, arthralgia for those with infective thyroiditis, whether they're taking in lithium or amiodarone, which can also cause thyroiditis and any past histories of cancer, such as breast or renal cell, which can metastasize to the thyroid. In terms of examination, you want to look at their vitals, thyroid, and a cervical lymph node exam. Vitals, you're looking for tachycardia, suggestive of hyperthyroidism, and arrhythmias, which can also be caused by hyperthyroidism, such as ventricular sinus tachycardia, or um, atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardias. In terms of thyroid, you want to characterize the lump, um, and then also assess for any hypothyroidism signs, such as thickened or puffy appearance of the skin, otherwise known as myxedema, myxedema, delayed relaxation of reflexes and pleural effusions. Also, um, for hypothyroidism, signs that suggestive include tachycardia, arrhythmia, muscle wasting, tremor, bris brisk reflexes, rival hair, and graves stare. And if they have a diffusely enlarged thyroid, you're thinking either graves or thyroiditis. Features of malignancy include nodules that are greater than 4 cm in size, firm on palpation, fixed to the surrounding tissues, cervical lymphadenopathy, vocal cord paralysis, and history of ionizing radiation to the neck or upper chest. And you want to look for tattoo marks because often when they do radiotherapy, they actually use tattoo marks to indicate where the radiotherapy should be terms to line up the machine and also a cervical lymph node exam to look for any um, lymphadenopathy either reactive or from metastases from the thyroid itself. In terms of investigations bedside you want to do an ECG looking for the arrhythmias, bloods, thyroid function tests, calcitonin, thyroid stimulating hormone, parathyroid studies which include serum calcium, total and ionized and parathyroid hormone. Imaging, you want to do ultrasound guided cervical ultrasonography, lidar endoscopy, special tests, you really need a fine needle aspiration in order to get a biopsy of this lesion, often done at the same time with the ultrasound, a radionuclide scan, 
such as technetium to see whether there's any metastases, as well as a molecular analysis of the cytological specimens from the fine noodle aspiration for those which have indeterminate cytology, it's for example looking for BRAF and RAS mutations. So this is a summary page of why we do each of the investigations. Um, you feel free to pause it here just to read through it one by one, um, but we'll just go through it quickly. So thyroid function test, you want to see whether it's hypo or hyperthyroidism. Often when you're thinking of cancer, the, the thyroid nodule is actually hypofunctioning, so it's very rare to get hyperthyroidism with um, thyroid cancers. Calcitonin is raised with medullary thyroid tumors and with parathyroid studies you have elevated calcium and elevated parathyroid hormone if you have thinking of a parathyroid um, adenoma. In terms of ultrasound um, of, the, of the neck, you want to find the dimensions of the nodules and see whether it has solid or cystic components. And suspicious features suggestive of cancer include microcalcifications, hypervascularity, marked hypoechogenicity, and irregular margins. And you can also look at the cervical lymph nodes. With laryngoscopy, if you see a paralyzed vocal cord, it's highly suggestive of malignancy whereby the thyroid cancer has actually invaded into one of the recurrent laryngeal nerves, resulting in the paralysis of the vocal cord. Fine noodle aspiration is indicated for nodules greater than 10 millimeters, or if it has suspicious features stated above with the ultrasound machine, or if the nodules has grown in size compared to prior assessment. You only want to do FNA for euthyroid or hypothyroid patients because in those who are hyperthyroid, if you do an FNA, they can lead to thyroid toxicosis, which is quite life-threatening. In terms of the radionuclide scan, this is very useful to evaluate the degree of, of functioning of the nodule. So if it's hyperfunctioning, it's called a hot nodule, and this is almost always benign. These tend to be either Graves' disease, Hashitoxicosis, toxic adenoma, um, and toxic multinodular goiter. And the rest, um, which are cold nodules, you're thinking it could potentially be malignancy. You also want to stage the thyroid cancer, so you do a chest x-ray looking for pulmonary metastases, a CT neck and chest to look for local tumour as well as lymph nodes and pulmonary metastases, and a PET scan is often not recommended. So in terms of um, the FNA of the thyroid nodule, you send this off for cytology and then the pathologist, the cytologist looks at these and gives it one of six categories. So looking at the cells, category one is if it's a non-diagnostic or unsatisfactory sample. Um, category two is a benign thyroid cells. Uh, category three is ATP or follicular lesion of undetermined significance. Um, category four is a follicular tumor or suspicious for follicular tumor. Category five is a suspicious, suspicious malignancy and category six is definitely malignant. So this is what you do with each of the different categories. If it's non-diagnostic or Bethesda category one, you need to repeat the FNA using ultrasound guidance. If it shows papillary thyroid cancer, thyroidectomy. If it's suspicious for malignancy, thyroidectomy. If it's benign, for example, adenomatoid nodule, macro follicular pattern, colloid cyst, Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, you want to repeat the ultrasound in six to 18 months to assess stability. Oops. If growth is greater than 20% um, in two or three dimensions or the appearance of new suspicious ultrasound characteristics, consider repeating the FNA. If the cells are atypical of undetermined significance, acuse, um, such as nuclear atypia, or it's f plus, follicular lesion of undetermined significance, you want to repeat the FNA in two to three months. And if it is a follicular neoplasm or suspicious for a follicular neoplasm, if the serum TSH is low or low normal, consider a radionuclide scan if one of the if one has not been done. And if it's non-functioning, you want to think about doing surgery. If it's functioning, then it's benign. So here's how you stage for thyroid cancer. It differs based on the age. So if they're less than 45 years versus if they're greater than 45 years. 
And so stage one is when the tumor size is T1. Stage two is tumor two with N0, M0. Stage three is a mix between um, different tumor sizes as well as um, nodal involvement. Stage four A is again when you're, you have different tumor sizes and variable nodal sizes. Stage four B is when you have the largest size of the tumor and any lymph node involvement. And stage four C is when you have met metastases to a distant site irrespective of your tumor or node. And in terms of, um, and this is only for papillary or th and follicular thyroid cancer, if you have undifferentiated, i.e. anaplastic, you immediately become stage 4, irrespective of the tumour, node and metastases. So management of thyroid cancer. So you want to do this in a multidisciplinary team setting to determine whether you want to have curative or palliative um, therapy. Often with papillary and follicular tumors, they do a total thyroidectomies. You can consider doing a hemithyroidectomy for those with low risk or women who need the thyroid, um, thyroxine or triiothyroidine in pregnancy, as well as radioreactive iodine ablation and thyroid replacement. For medullary tumors, you would want to do a thyroidectomy as well as a cervical lymph node dissection, as well as ven vandetanib, which is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor for aggressive locally advanced or metastatic thyroid tumors, and thyroid replacement. For anaplastic tumors, because it's so dismal in terms of its outcomes, it's mostly palliative surgery, chemo radiation, and thyroid replacement. So these are four reasons to operate on a thyroid. Firstly, obstructive symptoms. Secondly, malignancy. Thirdly, overactivity. And fourthly, cosmetic which is a PBS indicated indication. So that's the last slide of this presentation. I hope it was useful and please stay tuned for any more um, 